Hello everybody, dear friends, we are happy to welcome you at our annual uh, scientific research and academic writing conference and we wish you good luck and we appreciate the, the challenge you've performed uh, with your work and good luck to everybody, we are ready to enjoy your speeches. present my academic writing on the theme why Stradivarius violence are so unique. I decided to choose this theme for my say because I admire music and I've been playing the violin from the childhood. Therefore, to learn about the best violence in the world, Stradivarius violence is my great interest and pleasure. Next slide please. Stradivarius violence are own for the supposedly superior sound when compared to other instruments. This has resulted that numerous studies hunting for a scientific reason for why stress sound so good. A number of these studies have focused on the chemical composition of the wood in the violence, made by Antonio Stradivari in the 17th and 18th centuries. Next slide. Research often looks at how the materials are used in the construction of the violence that gives them a particular quality. For example, one study argued that the Little Ice Age, which affected Europe from 1645 to 1750, was responsible for the slow growth wood used in the construction of the violence, that gives them a particular quality. This type of wood would have been available to all violin makers in Europe, so other work has looked at the varnish applied to stress. But is there really a secret to be found in the study of various examples? According to Dr. Whiteley, Stradivari experimented with various forms, including a longer model. Aside from the performance of the musician, the quality of the sound can be affected by the rigidity between the bridge and the panels, the shape and size of the panels, and the material of what they are composed of. <coughs> Next slide. One study in 2011 asked professional musicians to compare wireless and Castor de Vario in Guarneri with high quality new instruments while playing blindfolded in a room with a relative dry acoustics. So it appears that the secret of the Stradivarius violence when compared to other high quality instruments might be not so much of the quality of its acoustic response, but rather a halo effect. In my work, I made a research on history and mystery of the Stradivarius violence creation. I found out possible secrets of their uniqueness. I've compared these features with to the modern violence. I've achieved all my goals and I've revealed my theme. Thank you for the attention. Thank you very much. Hello, hello. my name is Eric Hadartsu. Yeah. I'm the student of fifth grade of the uh, North Bradway, South Branch of Skuzma, and I'm going to tell you about what are the differences of tornadoes and winds. So my aim is to learn uh, something new about tornadoes and winds and to compare them. My goals are to investigate what is a wind, what is a tornado, and to find out what are their differences. First, I want to tell you about wind. Wind is moving air. It constantly moves from places of high pressure to places with low pressure. Also, the bigger are the temperature differences between the two places, the faster the wind blows. Winds have names. World wind patterns are called global winds. The most famous of global winds are the trade winds that blow towards the equator, the center of the world. Over here. I'm too slow. Uh, there are also local winds that blow only in special places, such as uh, such as the cold dry mist that blows down to the south of France. There are also local winds of Russia too, such as the Barguzi wind, strong steady winds on Lake Baikal. Uh, a wind can turn on your TV. People can harness the uh, people can harness the, uh, the energy of the wind to produce electrical electricity for our homes. How does it work? Tall turbines are positioned in windy spots. 
As the wind turns the turbine, it powers the movement powers a generator that produces electrical energy. Now I want to tell you about wild whirling winds, tornadoes. Scientists are not very sure how tornadoes form, but they think that tornadoes form when hot moist air rises and mixes with cold air in a supercell. This mix makes winds spin in final shape and when the storm touches the ground, it is a tornado. They can form anywhere. Uh, of course, you can measure winds using the, B, the EF scale or the Enchanted Fujita scale. This scale measures wind from EF0 to EF5. And speaking about EF5 tornadoes, one of these in the 1930s in Minnesota lifted a train full of passengers 15 meters up into the air and it stayed there for 5 seconds. There are also more types of wind or tornadoes such as water sprouts and dusty winds. Everyone knows about the Lake Loch Ness in Scotland, I, I guess. Uh, er, it is famous because of sites of a mythical monster nicknamed Nessie. It's cool to see one, but actually people who saw this monster could see a water spout. Now listen carefully, because this is important. Did you guess what I'm going to talk about? Yes, I'm going to talk about tornado safety. This could be helpful. Go to a basement. If you cannot, go to a bathroom or closet. Stay away from windows. Protect your head. If you're at a school, go under a desk or a table. If you're in a tall building, go to the stairs. If you're in a car, wear your seatbelt and lean forward. If you're outside, lie down on the ground. Now I can compare tornadoes and winds. So first, they form in very different ways. And first about wind. Wind is moving air. It constantly moves from places of high pressure to places of low, with low pressure. A tornado is also moving air that forms by hot moist air that rises and mixes with cold air in a supercell. Let's compare their speed and strength. One speed is moving to zero, from zero to one kilometer power, maximum 80 kilometers per hour. Tornadoes are of course faster, minimum 136 kilometers per hour, maximum 402 kilometers per hour. Uh, uh, also, a wind cannot stop. It just becomes very unlikely when you think that there is no wind. But a, but a tornado can stop. I don't know why I added this slide, but it means that I also have a glossary. These are some of the words that I have in my glossary, in my research work. And that's all. Hi everyone. Today, I want to tell you about the problem of space debris. I choose this topic because it's where we see this problem. Now we speak a lot about pollution of the environment of the world's oceans, but exactly this problem is almost not talked about. So I decided to take the world's initiative. Each of us knows that humanity polluted the planet and continues to make an incredible amount of garbage every day. But only some people know mm, that during the short period of space exploration we turned near a space into a dump of spent satellites. Since the beginning of space age in the 1950s we launched thousands of rockets and even more satellites into orbit. Oh, no, no, I forgot. So, yeah. so, yeah. Okay, uh, uh, we launched thousands of rockets and even more satellites into orbit, but many of them are still there and we may face increasing risk of collision as we launched more satellites and rockets. Such garbage flies in the universe at a speed 10 times faster than the speed of a bullet. And when these objects collide, they can make thousands of new, smaller debris particles. Next slide, please. And do you know what's the most ancient space debris in the universe? No, no, what no, is no it? we don't. This is the American satellite. American satellite, yeah. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. 
Today, scientists are looking for ways to trap debris and clean up space. So, we are making progress in space exploration, but at the same time, we harm our planet and the universe as the whole. Let's be more careful with the world and living. Oh, well, uh, thank you for your <laughs> Hello, my name is Sofia Rempel. I'm from the 6th grade South. Why are the telephone booths in England red? In the modern media, red telephone box can be seen as a cultural symbol of Great Britain. Does the color have anything to do with the flag of England? Does the telephone box have a more interesting and deep history? The aim of the research is to study why are the telephone booths in England red? The tasks are to learn the history of the telephone, to research the history of famous cultural symbol of Great Britain, the red telephone booth, to explore if there is a future for phone booths in our modern life with mobile phones. The most iconic symbol of Great Britain, the history of the telephone. It's well known that the telephone was invented by Alexander Graham Bell, but his primary focus was on helping deaf students communicate. Both Bell's mother and wife were deaf and became the inspiration for his work. The British telephone booth. Back when Mr. Bell invented the telephone, it was a luxury in many countries, not available to ordinary people. In England, it was used only for the needs of the royal palace. Then phones became public and were first installed in stores. But because of the noise and the large number of people, it was impossible to talk there. So it was decided to take them out on the street. The first standard design was released in 1921, called Prosaic, the kiosk number one, or K1. First, the silver color was chosen. It was simple and without frills. But the English like to make everything beautiful. In 1924, the General Post Office launched a competition to upgrade the booth. The Royal Fine Art Commission invited three respected architects. The winner was the architect Sir Giles Gilbert Scott, who was inspired by the tomb of Sir John Stone. Um, later, other versions, K3, K4, K5, were developed. K6 version, redesigned by Sir Scott in 1935, became the iconic red telephone box. There is an opinion that during the Great London Fox, when nothing was visible at arm's length, uh, it was decided that it had to be made bright. Uh, to make the phone easy to find in case of an emergency. So the silver color turned into a bright red, which is visible even through thick fog. Besides, the phone booth must be transparent so that the person inside can be seen, protected from street hooligans. But not all phone booths in the UK are red. For example, in Kingston Open Hall, phone booths were installed cream colored since they were not part of network in the UK but belonged to a city provider. The future of the red telephone booths. Unfortunately, every year the number of red booths de decreases. Now everyone uses mobile phones. But to preserve cu the culture symbol of Great Britain, the booths are being converted <coughs> into art objects, ATM cash machines, libraries, storage points for first aid kits, mobile phone charging stations, a small cafe, a tiny repair studio, a small office. One of the most unusual uh, was transforming it into a living aquarium. The anglophile owner is to buy your own red phone booth. But you should keep in, but you should keep in mind a couple of things. The phone box is very heavy and will require special transport and probably a crane. Working on this research allowed us to learn about the inventor of the telephone, Mr. Alexander Bell. Interestingly, the phone booth uh, design had many variations, but thanks to architect Sir Scott, um, the iconic symbol of Britain has got its traditional shape. And, uh, be and because of the great London fox and rainy weather, red color. But the most pleasant thing for us was to learn uh, that people continue to preserve such important historical symbols and give them a new life. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure meeting you all, listening to you. Thank you. Thank you very